Hey everybody, it's Mike the Reptile Guy here. Um, we're going to be doing a little kind of operation type deal on a little turtle here we got. This is one of the 14 turtles that came in from that reservoir in Surrey uh, and it's the one that had the broken shell. Now its shell is broken all down here. You can see it's completely fractured um, and the back part of the shell is, is lower than the front part of the shell. Now originally we thought that it had already fused together but uh, the last couple of weeks we've noticed it's actually you can move it here right and there's also if you look well you won't be able to see on camera but all down here there's actually a gap in there so we can't actually put this guy in water or this girl in water yet because if we do that all the water is going to get in there any bacteria or dirt that may be in the water will get inside basically inside her body cavity and cause a, a really bad infection and probably end up killing her so what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, it's a quick setting epoxy and just epoxy the shell but I want to get it back into place and the reason we can't actually get it back into place right now is because there's a little tiny bit of the front part of the shell there that's actually stopping the back, the back part from actually popping back into place. So what I'm going to do is use the Dremel here. I've got a really thin sanding blade on there. We're just going to kind of touch the little, you know, the rough spot there and try to get it so it's, you know, away so we can get the, the back part of the shell back up into place. Now I don't recommend doing this if, you, if you've never done something like this or never seen something like this done before um, and this YouTube video doesn't count. Um, I don't recommend doing this. I recommend taking your turtle to a vet and get, you know, get this done properly. Um, I have consulted a vet about doing this and he's, you know, he's good with what we're doing here. Um, so first I'm going to do the Dremel part and it's probably going to be really loud so I'm sorry about that. You should probably use goggles too when you're doing this. And I'll turn it here a little bit so you can see. Just that little... Just that little tiny ledge right there, that's all that's stopping this part from getting back into place here. So, again, sorry for the sound. It actually smells really bad too. Okay, now let's see if we can pop this little guy back up into place. Now I'm going to take a little bit more off. It's still really... Now. Oh, come on. And the turtle is awake right now, just so you know too, the turtle is alive and everything, it's just not moving too much, it's pretty nervous with everything that's going on. Ah, oh, the shell is not going back into place, so it must have, it must have already fused, before we got it, it was already fused here, so it's probably fused into place and that really sucks because we're not going to be able to get it into place. Now to give you an idea too uh, as to how the turtle shells work, they are essentially their bone with a keratin layer over top of them. But I don't know if you can see, if you look really close, just from the little bit of sanding we did, there is a little bit of blood coming out there. So just so people know, turtles actually do have feelings in their shells. So things like this, they, they do feel this. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, that would have hurt the turtle a little bit, but there's no way of giving it a little anesthetic to freeze that area because it is a shell so there's nothing we can do about that um, but I'm sure that she'd be much much happier once your shell is fixed and just go through that little bit of pain unfortunately I don't think we're gonna be able to get the shell back into place no it's not happening not happening at all so now we're gonna it's I, I wanted to get the shell back into place but now I mean we're not gonna be able to do that now because it's obviously fused into place up near the top here so now we're just going to have to put a thicker resin layer, uh, the epoxy layer, on here just to seal that up. We want to seal the whole thing up and basically we'll just have to keep it, you know, epoxy to make sure the epoxy stays on there until the shell eventually grows and fuses back together. So, let's give this a shot. Now this is a quick setting epoxy. So it sets in about five minutes here. I'm already squirting it all over the place here. So it's a two-part epoxy. It'd be nice if I could have gotten the epoxy that was already mixed together unfortunately my hardware store didn't have that and there we go now it's, it's not even evenly mixing there we go oh okay all right 
And we're just going to mix it up here. Like I said, I wish we could have gotten the epoxy that was already mixed, but you can't, it's, it's harder to find that epoxy. Alright, that should be mixed up. So now, I should want to do two. I've got a little clamp here, and I'm just going to use this little clamp, just because the back part of the shell sags down a little bit, so I'm going to try to use the, the clamp just to kind of hold the, just to hold it into place just a tiny little bit here. Oh, it's not going to stay on. Not the greatest clamp in the world either. Hmm. I'll just hold it right there. Okay. And I am going to put a pretty thick layer of epoxy on the whole thing because we want to make sure that it's a kind of a watertight seal in there. Because again, if it right now it's dry dock, we don't actually have it in the water because we don't want the infection to get in there. But obviously we can't keep it out of the water forever, so we have to make sure we get a good seal in there so that when we do put it back in the water, the water isn't going to seep in and cause those infections. So, and this is the big gap right here that we're filling in a little bit. There's that done. So basically I'm going to let this dry and I'm probably going to put another layer of epoxy on after this is dry just to reinforce it. And then hopefully in a day or so once this is really nice and set in we can put her in the water so she can actually swim and be a turtle. There's some up here that's actually cracked up here too. And we don't actually know how she broke her shell. Like I said, she came in like this with those other 14 sliders. We think it was probably some sort of, she got hit by some equipment or something like that that they were using to uh, drain that reservoir they were doing the maintenance on. So we also, when I was um, doing some epoxying here, we finished up epoxying the bottom part of the shell. I noticed that under the shell, there's actually a hole about the size of the end of this paintbrush here. And uh, so we had to seal that up too because if we didn't seal that, eventually the water would seep in there and again the bacteria gets in there and they get an infection. If this turtle was to get some sort of infection inside of it, um, it by the time we noticed it, it would probably be, be too late for the turtle. We wouldn't be able to give it antibiotics. It would probably die. Um, so that's why it's really important to make sure all the little holes are sealed up in that. So I'm really glad I checked the underside of the turtle here. Um, now I, just, I have a little piece of paper in here because I don't want the leg to touch the epoxy. Otherwise the leg's going to get stuck to the shell too and that's just a pain in the butt I don't want to deal with. Um, now also when, when you're doing things like this, um, you can't actually hold the turtle upside down for too long because they can't actually breathe when they're upside down um, because they're, they're basically their internal organs are smushing their lungs together so they can't actually breathe in. So we're just holding it upside down for a couple minutes for this to set um, and then uh, yeah hopefully this should be good to go. Now this epoxy, it's, it's been a few minutes since we've epoxied everything, I'm doing the second coat now, um, but this epoxy it's actually hardened pretty nicely. I don't know how well you can get in there with the camera and see that. But uh, yeah, it's actually hardened up pretty nicely. Um, it's got a nice seal around there, so no water's going to be going in there. Basically, what we're trying to do is, there, well, there's two things. We're trying to secure the shell and waterproof the shell, all right? So I think we've done pretty good because the shell isn't moving at all right now. There's no flex to the shell at all, um, which is good. It's what we want. That way, it hopefully, we'll stay in place in, you know, long enough for it to heal. And uh, yeah, should be good to go. So again, thank you for watching, and uh, again, if you do have something like this, do not try this on your own. Take it to a vet, get a vet to look at it, and uh, yeah, hope you learned something here. Thanks a lot.